As many of you know, Salford is my hometown and it's quite a busy metropolis. But long ago, like most places, it was a series of very small villages and hamlets that have grown over the centuries to become these busy towns. But one local family who've lived in one of the homes there for several generations have experienced a great deal of paranormal activity. I was recently contacted by one of the family members who shared the details of some of the activity taking place in the home. Jane's family, like mine, have lived in the area for decades and it's taken her some time to finally reveal what the family are experiencing. Jane said, Hi Deborah, I've just seen your message asking me what area I used to live in when I saw the shadow being on the stairs. It was our family home directly opposite the church. It remains in the family where my mum, you know, who is now in the 90s, still lives. Over the years, I've been back to live there and so have my children, who've all sensed something strange. What I didn't mention in my comment, because it sounded too ridiculous, is that what my friend and I saw, we must have been about five or six years old at the time, actually looked like the shadow of the devil, as a child would think of it, with horns, a tail and a trident. I think it was because of how it looked that at first I thought it was funny. I really thought that my brother, who was a couple of years older, must have been, you know, somehow messing about upstairs and making this shadow. It was when I got halfway up the stairs and realised that no one was there, that we got freaked out and ran off. I can't say that I was really scared. I remember being excited and giddy when I told my gran, so I can understand why she wouldn't believe us. It was afterwards that I felt fearful, and for years there continued to be something very unsettling in the front rooms of the house and around the stairs. I think now that whatever the entity was, it showed itself to us in a way that would be recognisable to children, to elicit fear. I still feel that seeing a devil shadow sounds too silly to be believable, but that's what I saw, so I'll leave it up to you whether or not you want to give that detail. When my son was a teenager, he often stayed with my mum and dad and there seemed to be some poltergeist activity around him in the house. In the end, he spoke to it and told it that it was scaring his nan and if it didn't stop, he'd get it exercised. But if it behaved, it'd be allowed to stay. That was about 15 years ago and since then the house has been quiet. Other than the poltergeist activity, which my mum witnessed, she never sensed anything in the house or felt scared. She's always loved the house, and although she thinks that there was something there, she believes it looks out for her and even finds it comforting. We've all felt relatively comfortable there in the intervening years, but I don't think any of us would particularly want to spend time there when mum's not in. We've always wondered with the house being opposite a church whether it might be on a ley line. There has been a church on the site since the late 17th century but the house itself is only about 100 years old. I mentioned in my comment that I've had experiences throughout my life, not all of which have been in that house etc. I was able to sense things, I had psychic dreams and I heard knocks and bangs. For the last three or four years, I seem to have lost my sensitivity, which could have resulted from a bad fall on my head around that time, but I don't really know. The only thing I'm aware of now is that I still hear occasional bangs in my own home, and sometimes I hear things clatter and fall. But on inspection, and you know, closer look, nothing's moved. It's difficult to properly convey the feelings that we've experienced on the stairs and in the two front rooms of the house. It's always been like a sense of being watched, the feeling of a presence. Not exactly menacing, but not friendly either. Apart from the shadow and a small blue orb, and more recently an orb caught on the indoor security camera, I've not actually seen anything. The poltergeist activity felt like something different, but I'm reluctant to say more about that, because I don't want to feed that energy and possibly reawaken it. I hope this is useful information for you, Deb. I've been listening to you on YouTube for a couple of years and I find your programmes fascinating. I asked Jane if her son was in his mid-teens by any chance when his experience happened and she confirmed that he was. That tells me 
it's a bloodline thing. For most families with the gift, things ramp up when we hit puberty. But even children from families with no background of supernatural activity can have this happen. Our energy changes at periods in our life. It becomes stronger, easier to tune into. And without knowing how to handle it, we can interpret it in different ways, even without realising. And we can even attract other energies to us at these times, good and bad. It happens early in life, around the ages of three to five, then in our early teens. And then when we become parents, it ramps up. And also when you meet middle age. As we change, our energy changes with us. And by the time you're my age, you've kind of settled into it. You realise it's not anxiety. You know, you're not mixing it up for something else. You kind of fit it. Like you, you fit your coat for the first time is the only way I can put it. When you're a teenager, it's really, really high energy that's around you. And that can manifest into activity around the home. And it can also attract activity to the home. It's a little earlier for girls, usually around about 12 or 13. But it's unique to each case. It's also unique to each of us. You know, we have different DNA, don't we? There are certain things that you see in your kids or your parents that you recognise in yourself. I have a problem with electricity. I tend to shock people when I touch them, I kiss them. And it bloody hurts sometimes. My watches never work, so I just wear them now without ever winding them up. I actually wear my nan's watch because she was exactly the same. And for some of us, it's a connection to animals, nature, healing and crystals. But you each have a unique gift. That gift needs to be nurtured and accepted and discussed in the comfort of your home with people that accept you. Every day, extraordinary stuff happens to the most ordinary of folk. By talking about these happenings and accepting there are no real concrete answers and a good protection routine is far better than cries of satanic panic. We're electrical beings and accepting that is half the battle. I would like to thank Jane for sharing her experiences with us and I also know how hard it can be to open up about something like this in a small town. I take my hat off to her. But I also know there are people all over Salford and Manchester and radiates out all across the UK. Ordinary folk like me who have the most extraordinary experiences. And for some, it can be a one-off event. And for others, it can be a lifetime of them. Accepting it, learning it, is a great way to overcome it. So if Jane shares anything else with me, I will, of course, update you on that. But until next time, good night, everyone.